Good morning. And welcome to St. Anthony's. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Harold and Leona Weiss. A note about our procedure today at Mass. At communion time, we ask that you please remain kneeling or sitting in your places. The Father will come to each of you at your pews to distribute communion. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and teva. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
The response is, the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, As we are the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the three readings of today are inviting us, are a call to fellowship, a call to share 
what we have with our brothers and sisters who have not. Mother Teresa of Calcutta once heard that there is a Hindu family starving for a long time without food. So she took a bag of rice with few nuns, walked into their house and gave the parcel to the mother of the house. In front of them, she divided the rice into two bags, you know, two equal portion, and took one portion and left the house immediately without leaving a word to Mother Teresa. After some time, she walked in. Then the mother asked the woman what she was trying to do. Then she said, there is also in our neighborhood a Muslim family who have many kids, many children are starving. So we can survive with this small portion for a few days. So what do we learn? The woman was so kind that she wanted to share even in her suffering. You know, that's what the three readings are inviting us. The first reading we see, Prophet Isaiah living among the exiled in Babylon. Maybe this took place at the end of the Babylonian exile. The people already were living in darkness, in despair, and he gives a word of comfort. He's inviting them to a party to a banquet. You know, he says, O people of Israel, come to the waters. Buy food for yourselves, free of cost. You know, in a way, God promises them that there is an end in their struggle. He is going to bring them back to their home where they are going to be comforted. And he is going to be once more again their God and Lord and he is going to renew the covenant that he made with the ancestors. A call to share a love of God with his people. In the gospel today, we have the feeding of the 5,000. You know, this story looks similar to the Eucharistic banquet that the early Christian community had and that which we do in the Eucharistic celebration. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke, gave it to his disciples. They ate. That's what we find in the gospel of today. But this passage which is familiar to all of us, we might have heard hundred times are read. We know that Jesus took five loaves, two fish, gave to 5,000 people. They all ate and the balance remained like 12 baskets. But most of the time, when many preachers or priests preach the homily, some look at it as a miracle with five loaves, two fish, feeding 5,000. A great miracle. Others teach as though it is a teaching that Jesus is calling every one of us to share what we have. So most of the time I see priests, they may start this event as a great miracle and end as a lesson. I'm not going to do anything different. You know, the only thing that which we can notice from the miracles that Jesus performed. He was looking something outside. You know, the leper went and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Then Jesus says, I wish. You know, he needs some kind of faith from outside. You know, Whenever Jesus, before performing any miracles, he asks, 
do you believe that I can do this for you? Then say yes. Like Martha, coming to Jesus and telling, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Son of God. Then Lazarus comes into life. You know, in the passage of today, maybe Jesus was looking from the people or from the part of the disciples something, some output. You know, they have to profess their faith. You know, first of all, the feeding of the 5,000 is an important event because it appears six times in the gospel. Two times in the gospel of Matthew, two times in the gospel of Mark, one time in the gospel of Luke, and one time in the gospel of John. Other than the, de the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, only this incident is reported in all the four gospels. So that shows the importance of this event. The importance of breaking up the bread in the life of every Christian. First of all, the Gospel of St. Matthew is written to the Judeo-Christians, the converts from the Judaism. They just broke away from their mother religion called Judaism. So Matthew somehow wanted to bring Jesus as the source and the fulfillment of the Old Testament. So he builds a lot of parallelism in his gospel from the Old Testament and the New Testament, Moses and the prophets and Jesus. And he also brings a lot of symbolic numbers in his gospel. As we have heard, the 12 baskets representing the 12 tribes of Israel, five laws, the Pentateuch, the first five books in the gospel are the holy scripture of the Jews. Then we have five loaves, two fish. Number seven, number of fullness. So that's the way Matthew explains to the new converts from Judaism that Jesus is the fulfillment. Jesus is the promised Messiah. And he also builds some kind of parallelism from the Old Testament to the New Testament. For example, when we read book of Numbers, chapter 12, verses 1, Moses, you know, the miraculous feeding of manna. God tells Moses, you have to feed 600,000 men as warriors. Then Moses says, you know, the livestock that we brought from Egypt are running out. I have nothing to feed these people. Then God showers the miraculous manna to feed them. Then we have the second kings where prophet Elisha at Gilgal where the people are starving. He takes 20 barley loaves and feeds hundreds of people. You know when Elisha told his associates or his companions take this and feed the people they reject they say with 20 barley loaves we cannot feed hundreds of people are we he says they will eat their fill and we will have something remaining that came into action so in a way Matthew takes this incident to show that Jesus comes in line with this Moses and the great prophet Elisha, that Jesus is greater than all these. Then Matthew also narrates, you know, after the death of John the Baptist, Jesus is feeding the 5,000. So he also makes a contrast between two banquets, a banquet which was hosted by King Herod, which resulted by the death of John the Baptist. And Jesus hosting a banquet which resulted the people felt his compassion, his love, his sharing. The banquet that hosted by Herod was an environment where arrogance, hatred and a murder was part of it. Whereas 
the banquet that Jesus hosted resulted with a lot of compassion and kindness. He felt compassion for the people. Then the banquet Herod hosted took place in a royal palace. Whereas the banquet that Jesus hosted took place in a deserted, in a wilderness. But anyway, Matthew takes these two banquets and prefigures the last supper and death of Jesus. But we also notice the two important characters in the gospel of today. Jesus and his disciples. You know, Jesus felt compassion for the people. What did the disciples do? They came to Jesus and said, It is late. Send away the crowd. Let them go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Here, the disciples lack hospitality. They don't want to serve the people. They are also like you and me, dear brothers and sisters. Faithless and fearful. They were fearing that the phylos and the two fish will be missing. It's not enough for them. They were fearing to serve. They failed to recognize who was with them. By this time, Jesus performed hundreds of miracles. They never realized that they are with Jesus. We also do that in our daily lives. Most of the time, we forget that we are with Jesus. Without Jesus, we are nothing. The Spirit of the Lord dwells in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We forget. But what Jesus tells, you know, at this time, Jesus is supposed to be disappointed. He has to rebuke the disciples. He did not do that. He offers them another opportunity, a call to serve. You give something to them to eat. No, you give something. The disciples, you know, at this time, they say, we have five loaves, two fish. We are ready to give. You know, how gracious words that come away from the disciples after all these struggles between emotion and action and behavioral change. The disciples come and say, we are ready. We have five loaves, two fish, take it. Then Jesus blesses it, brokes, gives to the people. Then there were 12 baskets remaining to be tasted by the people. You know, that was the great miracles. So what do we learn? That God really cares for us. And there is enough and more awaiting for us. God is ever ready to feed us, take care of us, when we totally submit ourselves to the Lord. That's what in the second reading we hear, St. Paul raising a question. What can divide us from the love of Christ? Then he says, nothing can divide from the love of Christ unless until you yourself have decided to go away from him. If you really wanted Jesus to be with you, then there is nothing that is going to divide us. Or nothing is going to take us away from Jesus. There was a story about a beggar. We all know beggars, is it? They beg in the streets, maybe in the parking lot. So, one day, a beggar heard that the king is going to attend the Sunday service in a church. So the beggar came, having a lot of hope on the king, saying that, from tomorrow, I am not going to beg, because the king is going to come. He's, he will give me a lot of arms. He will give me a lot of gifts. So with that, I can become richer. So he was waiting for the king outside the church. The king came in appropriate time, got down from his chariot. But it was unusual, extraordinary. The king started begging from the people. You know, the, there were a big crowd gathered, you know, to greet the king. Then he asked, you know, arms from everyone. 
Give me something. Give me something. He came to the beggar and put his hand before him. With a lot of struggle, the beggar put his hand into a pocket and took a cent and gave to the king. Then the king put that bag into the beggar's bag and went away. In the evening, the beggar came home with a lot of disappointment, distress. You know, I had a lot of hope on my king. I don't want to beg anymore, but you know what happened? Then anyway, he wanted to do the collection, you know, count how much he, he got on that day. To his surprise, he found one cent of a gold coin in his bag. Now, he started feeling bad. I could have given more to my king. What I gave to my king is what I received. You know, in the Gospel of John, it is not the disciples who give the phylos two fish. It is a little boy who offers it. Dear brothers and sisters, God has given us everything to survive here on this earth. He has given us a very gift of life, all that good education, wisdom, knowledge, all that we need to live in this earth. But in a way, he also calls us through the three readings of today to share what we have with those who don't have. To experience a love and fellowship. In the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus did not feed directly to the people. He used the disciples. He blessed, broke, gave it to the disciples. And the disciples distributed it to all the people. So in a way, today, Jesus wants you and me to share his love, his kindness, his gentleness to our brothers and sisters. He wants us to be an instrument of his love. You know the prayer, the famous prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola, a prayer for peace. He says, it is in giving that we receive. So when we give more, we receive more. Are we not ready, dear brothers and sisters, to offer Jesus more than five loaves, two fish for building up his kingdom here on this earth? If not, let us ask Jesus to give us the heart to love others, to share what we have with others. For that grace, let us continue to pray. Let the name of Jesus be praised forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, can substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son, right. spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Dear brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, 
Let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves, but our own needs, but for the entire people. For the bishops, priests, and deacons in their daily ministry of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. For governments and relief agencies helping to feed the starving people of our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are preparing for ordination to the priesthood, especially Deacon Riley Durkin, Deacon Jared Grossman, and Deacon Eric Seitz, we pray to the Lord. For men, women, and children threatened or attacked because of their faith, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering of our parish, community, and families, we pray especially for Betty Duval, Ginny Chevalier, mother of Samantha Doles, Mary Navarro, daughter of Tom and Sharon Navarro, Janine McAllister, Betty Sheely, and those on our prayer team. We pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. For those who have died, that they will quickly come to the fullness of joy in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be cohorts of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Okay. 
forget all his benefits. You have given us, O oh Lord, bread from heaven, and out with all delights and sweet. It is the Lord who forgives all your sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion, who fills your life with good things. Just deeds gives full justice to all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. You have given us.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and you never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. There's just one announcement today. Please stop by the gathering space after Mass to pick up your raffle tickets. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you, God. St. Michael. The Archangel. Amen.